My name is Paul Oliver. I'm the owner of Pinellas Power Products, and this is my new smartphone-based Wi-Fi remote control for the Honda EU7000 IS fuel-injected generator. Operation is straightforward and simple. You turn on your smartphone, then you click on the app, PPP Wi-Fi controller, as in Pinellas Power Products Wi-Fi controller, and let the system boot up. Now you have the display screen. You notice at the top of the screen it says Honda EU7000 IS. So you know you're linked to the right item. To operate the generator, you notice click the connect button and it now displays battery voltage. To run the generator, normally you would turn the key to the on position and then press start. On the Wi-Fi, you would press run and then you would press start. right after it starts, the AC voltage now displays what the AC output of the generator is. To put the generator into economy mode, you press the economy mode button. Now it's in economy mode. If you wanted to turn the outlets, which can now be controlled by Wi-Fi, turn the outlet on, which the light is plugged into, touch the, white, or touch the outlet button. Shut it off, touch the outlet button again. To shut the entire system down, you push shut down. Those are just a few of the features of my new Wi-Fi based remote control. If you'd like to know more about the system, continue watching this video. Thank you for your time. Okay, let's say that you have now arrived at your campsite. You have your generator unloaded and ready to run. You have two ways that you can run it. You can either run it in a stock mode, and to run it in stock mode, make sure that the mode switch is in the stock position, and now it works from the key and the start button. And I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how they work stock. Honda wrote a very good owner's manual to explain that. Uh, if you wanted to run it in Wi-Fi mode now, you'd flip the mode switch to the Wi-Fi mode. Then you would turn the key to the on position. Then you would press the arm button. When you press the arm button, you'll notice that the power light comes on. So now, make sure that your breakers are in the on position. Make sure that your eco mode is in the off or standard mode position. And now let's go inside in the air conditioning. Okay, so we have our generator set up at our campsite. And we've now moved inside to our RV or tent, or in this case, my air conditioned shop. So we're going to go turn on the smartphone. And the first thing we're going to do is check the, uh, the Wi-Fi settings to make sure that we are hooked to the Honda generator. I guess the fact that it says Honda EU7000 there in real small letters is confirmation enough, but we go to the router settings and yes, we are hooked to the Honda EU7000, and that's good. So we'll close this out. <clears throat> Then to operate the system, we go to, I've got the app on my home screen, but you'll see where it says PPP Wi-Fi controller, and that's Pinellas Power Products Wi-Fi controller. So we'll click on that, and it'll load the software. The first thing you'll notice is the SSID, and it says Honda EU7000 IS, because I've named this router Honda EU7000 IS, just to make it simpler. So when we want to hook up to the generator, we'll touch the connect button. You notice it turned green, and you notice the battery uh, switch down here, or battery display, now tells us battery voltage of 12.66 volts. When we get ready to run the generator, on the Honda EU7000, you'd turn the key to the on position, so in this case, you'd press the run button. Then you would press the start button on the generator, and it would start up, so we'll press the start button. We just heard the generator fire up in the background. And now if you look down here, you'll see the AC volts is showing 129 volts, which is better than just an idiot light coming on to say that the generator is running because with 129 volts, we know that it's definitely running. And we also know it's running correctly. So we can hear the generator running faintly in the background. If we touch the economy mode switch, we can no longer hear it, which means either it went into economy mode or I'm old and my hearing is going bad and I can no longer hear it. Uh, we have this light plugged into the outlets, so we can turn that outlet on 
and you'll notice the light went on. Or turn the outlet back off, you'll notice the light went off. In typical situations, you will shut down the generator by pressing the shutdown button always. Do not press the run button, and I'll show you why in a minute. Press the shutdown button, and that shuts down everything. Takes it off the economy mode, takes the outlet off, and everything else. So you watch your battery voltage. <clears throat> it's at 1272. We'll go ahead and turn the on, or turn the run on, and we hit the start again. Failed to start. Okay, we just heard it fire up, and we got AC voltage to confirm it. Apparently, I didn't tap the start button enough. <clears throat> okay, so your AC voltage is 129 volts, and we'll put it into economy mode again, and we'll turn the outlet on again. But this time, let me show you what happens if you shut it off by the run button. If you touch run again, it will shut off, yes. But it only shuts off the main run switch. It leaves the economy mode switch energized and the outlet switch energized which means it's drawing battery voltage to keep those switches energized you notice the battery voltage is now slowly creeping down on us because those switches are in the on position and even if you shut it off with the run switch and then traveled out of the area like you went into town or whatever and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll hit the disconnect button to simulate that we've traveled so far away that the phone is out of range of the generator. And then when we got back into range, we'll go ahead and hit the connect button again. And you'll notice that the economy mode and the outlet are still on. And now the battery voltage is down to 12.58. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and, well, you could um, shut the thing down with the shutdown key right now, and you'll notice that it shuts off everything. Or run, start, it just fired up and you watch your AC volts, 129 volts, uh, put it into economy mode, turn the outlet on. But now we're going to shut it down by the shutdown mode, which is the way it should be done. And this shuts down everything. And this will extend the battery life in standby mode because there's very little draw on it. So now that we have discussed or brought up the subject, excuse me, of battery voltage, with a good battery fully charged, this system has a standby time of about two days. And you'll notice that it has a battery switch or battery gauge down here. And it says the battery voltage is 12.62 volts. If you touch the battery voltage switch or button, it will bring up the display panel for setting. And right now we've got the alarm voltage set at 12.10. <clears throat> and I want to show you what the alarm voltage does. I'm going to back it down or excuse me, set the alarm voltage up to where the alarm voltage is higher than the battery voltage, and I think it was 12.58. So we'll set it to 12.70, and then we'll click OK. Now you'll notice that the background of the battery voltage has turned red, and that's to draw your attention to the fact that the battery voltage is below the alarm voltage. So I'll go ahead and set that back to the 12.10, which is much more appropriate for myself. And then we'll click OK. And let me go back there. You'll notice there's a fault voltage at 11.95 volts. And that is set up so that if the battery voltage drops below 11.95 volts for more than five minutes, the Wi-Fi shuts down. So if the generator is running, the charge coil in the generator will keep it above the 11.95 volts. But if you've got it in standby mode, like we'll say that you had been running it all day and you shut the generator off because you were done camping and you were exhausted so you didn't shut the key off or anything like that, and a few days later, sitting in your garage, the battery voltage drops below the 11.95 volts, the Wi-Fi system will then shut down everything, including the fuel injection on the generator, to preserve the battery voltage. Then whenever you shut the key off, turn the key back on, and press the arm button out there on the generator, or on the uh, controller board. And that's the whole purpose of that, is to protect the battery voltage so that you're never caught in a lurch. We'll click on OK, and our alarm voltage is back to 12.10. Uh, you'll notice that there are four additional buttons 
that are not used at this time, and they're labeled accessory one, two, three, and four when you get the system. Um, I hope to have customers submitting ideas as to what these could be used for. I designed the board to have expansion functions, so if you wanted to hook a light to accessory one, first thing I would do is go to the accessory one, change button name, and let's change the light from uh, accessory one, or excuse me, change this name from accessory one to light. And then we'll click OK. And now that button is labeled light. And then you'll notice this button. And what that does is allows you to set it for toggle or momentary or latching. So if it's in the momentary mode, you'd press the button and while you were pressing, it would be on, but when you took your finger off of it, it would be off, just like the start button. You notice everything, the run, the economy mode, and the outlet are toggle, but the start button itself is momentary, just like the uh, button on the generator. If you wanted it to be um, a timer so that you could set the light so that when you pressed it, it would come on for a certain number of seconds, you'd go to the upper button where it says 0S and we'll make it 8 seconds. So you'd set it to 8 and then you have to press the done button first and then the OK button. So now it's 8 seconds. So now we press the light and it will stay on for 8 seconds and then come off. The only reason I did that was because I could. Um, I'm not sure why anybody would need it as a timer function, but it wasn't that much more difficult to do. So we will go ahead and set that back to zero, and then click done, and then click OK, and it's back to zero seconds. And let's go ahead and set this back to toggle. So now it's back the way it was, except for the uh, button name itself. And we can name that, oh, we'll change it to fan no point in just calling it accessory one. We'll change the name to fan and you see how the uh, button is renamed. You just type in what you want and then you click on OK and now it's labeled fan. <clears throat> um, hopefully uh, as these are out in the field customers will send in uh, suggestions of some of the functions like uh, if you wanted a fan to be turned on by remote control or any kind of a device that you wish had its own remote control but it doesn't we can now use the generator's remote control to control it with. Um, that should just about cover this.